I need a focus in this focus video. Today I'm sitting behind the wheel of a 2016 Ford Focus ST and I want to discuss why I believe that the Focus ST is going to appreciate in the future or at least hold its value, which it already has proven that it's done, um, besides the ridiculous used car market that we're presently in. And we'll get into some of the details of how much this car cost new back in 2016, how much a similar car to this cost today in the market, and what makes the Ford Focus ST overall a special car that's now unfortunately been discontinued. So without further ado, let's get out onto the road. And before we do, please, please consider subscribing if you enjoy content like this and throw the video a like if you enjoyed it. But now let's get out onto the road. So the Ford Focus, unfortunately, has been discontinued here in the US. And that's true of both the sporty ST and the super sporty RS models. Obviously today we are in the ST. So middle of the line in regards to the Focus lineup, but a very, very sporty car and a car that seems at least to me to have been directed right at the VW GTI. Now, having spent some time pretty recently in a Mark 7.5 GTI, which I will link down in the description box below, but also throw a card up to here. I can already say that I'm pretty impressed with the Focus. It seems to be a little more composed and planted than that GTI. And while you surely get a bit of German engineering and a little more refinement on the inside, a little bit of a higher build quality than GTI, the driving experience is uh, superior here in the Focus. On top of that, the Focus is an even more purist oriented, enthusiast oriented car. And that's because it only came with a six speed manual while the GTIs also come with a dual clutch automatic. In fact, you often find them equipped with a dual clutch automatic. Now this is a really nice manual to shift with. The only thing I have a little bit of difficulty with is the clutch that has a bit of an abrupt engagement point, which makes setting off at low speeds a little trickier than most modern manual cars I've driven, certainly more so than the likes of either the BMW M2 that I drove or even that nasty Chevy Camaro ZL1 that I drove. Both were a bit easier to take off in. This, I, I actually, I gotta admit it, I uh, stalled it, so I'm pretty embarrassed to say that. Oh yeah, stalled it, of course. Yeah. This is gonna be edited out, don't worry. This is gonna be edited out, don't worry. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's a little tricky to, to set off in, but once you're going, it's a very easy transmission to deal with. The only thing is it doesn't have some of the gimmicks like auto blip, auto rev match, which is not a big deal. And I'm sure many people actually prefer that, but it can also create uh, a little bit of, of a hassle for you in day-to-day -day commuting, which ultimately this is not a special summer car. This is a rather dailyable uh, hot hatch. Moving on to the specs here of the Focus ST, under the hood we have a two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine, which in stock form is producing 252 horsepower at 5,500 RPM and 270 pound feet of torque at 2,500 RPM. So we have a pretty decently meaty uh, turbocharged power band and in stock form, the turbo puts out about 16 or 17 PSI of boost, but companies like Mountune can get these up and Cobb can get these up to well into the mid twenties of boost with very little hardware involved. So you can definitely make a uh, Focus ST much quicker than it is in stock form. Although I would argue the chassis and the brakes are all very well balanced for the level of stock power. And in fact, as I can demonstrate here, it's certainly a quick car uh, and the sensation of speed is decent. It's not the wildest where you feel like you're going way faster than you are, but it also doesn't mute you from the outside and you can f sense some of your speed, which is a nice thing and I think a good thing, especially in a hot hatch. Now I mentioned it's more planted than the likes of a GTI, but it also weighs about 100-ish pounds more than a Mark 7 GTI. Um, despite that, because it makes more power than that same GTI, it actually has a better power to weight ratio. And that again is why I believe in stock form, it's still more than adequate and very nice for daily driving. Now, if you're someone who really wants to push your car, of course, 
one of those aforementioned tunes will just get more out of the car for you but the cost may be then needing to upgrade suspension and brakes to keep up with the power that now you're putting down. Getting into some twisties here, I can really notice that the Focus ST does not understeer too much. Now we only have 235 section rubber on all four corners, but that's actually better than a lot of other hot hatches that seem to put 225s. So you're getting a little extra rubber and on summer tires here, I'm having no problem putting the power down and taking turns at pretty decent speed without feeling too much understeer. We had a little dog toy squeak, but no squeak from the tires. So I'm impressed to say that this is actually taking turns at a pretty good pace. And all of this is kind of what makes the Focus ST so special. You have a good power to weight ratio for a hot hatch. You have a decently potent turbocharged motor, standard with a six speed manual. And despite only coming in front wheel drive, it doesn't feel as generically front wheel drive. Now, setting off from low speed and really dropping the hammer, you do have a bit of torque steer. And I can try to demonstrate that here if I have a little bit of a straightaway in a moment. Uh, but aside from that, I'm not constantly reminded of the front wheel drive dynamics of this car and the steering is rather direct as well which is just super nice in a front wheel drive hot hatch let me see if i can demonstrate that torque steer for you guys right around here so if i go into second about 25 miles an hour if i yeah so i get a little torque steer here you got a squirrel on the road as well and it's a moment of fighting the steering just a touch not as bad as a lot of hot hatches from about 10 or 15 years ago were when it came to torque steer or when it comes to torque steer, but still not as, uh, it's a little more perceptible than it is in say that same GTI for instance. Nothing is as bad as the Mini Cooper GP though. That was ridiculous torque steer, but of course 300 horsepower, it's a lot for front wheel drive to handle. And that's why the likes of the Focus RS, which is the top of the range Focus, uh, came with a torque vectoring all wheel drive system, which not only helps with power down more easily, but also offers you the uh, elusive drift mode. So everything that I've mentioned that makes the Focus ST so special is also part of why this car was unfortunately discontinued, why it met its untimely demise. As exciting as an enthusiast oriented hot hatch is with a potent power band, a standard and only available in fact in manual transmission, the market just doesn't want that as much or at least the common uh, consumer isn't looking, the average consumer isn't looking for that right now. People look, are looking for crossovers, are looking for EVs, hybrids, obviously automatic transmissions more and more than ever before. So with that in mind, Ford has actually nixed any sedan or non-SUV they make aside from the Mustang, which is crazy to realize here today in 2021, but it's true. And we even have an SUV Mustang now. So. They've really bought into this idea of sticking with SUVs, crossovers, and of course, what they're very, the very best at, which is trucks. And you have to look no further than the new Ford Bronco to recognize that. So back in 2016, this car knew as an ST1 package, which is the base of three available trims, ST1, ST2, and ST3. Um, I'll really quickly disclose that an ST2 gave you a larger screen here, which we'll get into in a moment. And I believe Xenon or LED headlights. The ST3 trim gave you leather trim for Caro sports bucket seats and some of the same stuff, meaning large screen, maybe a better audio system, nicer headlights. But really, I think going with an ST1 was a really smart move for the owner of this car back in 2016 because you're getting a more bare bones, purist spec of a car that really is meant to be a little bit of a purist car. I think if you're gonna spend the big bucks, you might as well have jumped up to a Focus RS. Obviously, that's gonna cost you about ten dollars or $15,000 more back then. That was a very long-winded way of saying that this car was about $26,000 new in 2016. However, the owner of this car was able to grab one with a hefty discount for $20,000, including tax, brand new. What does that mean? That means that today with just a hair under 21,000 miles on the clock, they could potentially sell this car for only about four or five grand less than they bought it for, maybe even more, but definitely in today's market, it's possible to sell this car for about 15, 16, 17 grand, maybe even more than that in the right condition. So that offers alone a tremendous value, but it kind of points to the fact that because this is a dying breed of car and this particular 
focus has obviously been discontinued, there is an appreciation from the enthusiast community for a bargain hot hatch. For about 15, 16 grand, you're getting a whole lot of car in this. Now car and driver rates the focus ST0 to 16 about 6.1 seconds, which I think I mentioned earlier in the video. Now, I'm not gonna destroy the clutch on this car and drop it, go crazy hard, but if I have a little straightaway, I'll set off here in a second and just get a sense of how fast it is for you guys without abusing the car. I would wager that in real world conditions, it's probably closer to seven seconds, but let's give it a semi-aggressive start without dropping the clutch. Okay, a little wheel spin. And we're on our way to 60. So yeah, that feels more like high sixes, low sevens. So we're talking about a manual transmission and real world conditions where I'm not trying to drop the clutch at four or 5,000 RPM. You got wheel spin. Uh, someone who's really willing to abuse their car could probably get closer to that car and driver claim, but that's also with a one foot rollout. So straight line performance, at least off the line, is not where a more handling focused hot hatch like this excels but once again it is in fact in the twisties when you want to keep a little bit of flow going it's just so easy i'm trying to i don't know it's just really easy to go fairly quick in the focus st so i definitely appreciate what this car is all about which is driving on twistier canyon roads, on smaller B roads, and utilizing its small, smaller size and nimble handling dynamics. So that's really the, the real bread and butter of, say, a Focus ST. If you're trying to do highway pulls, Ford happens to make another car that's very good at that. It's called the Mustang, um, in case you didn't know. But this is really that fun hot hatch, much more practical. And speaking of practicality, you have a fairly large cargo space in the rear definitely can fit plenty of dog toys as the owner of this car has demonstrated in the footage I'm now showing but also you have a decently sized rear seat it's actually a little disappointing and it's not quite as large as say the GTI it's actually barely larger than a much smaller car in the Mini Cooper hardtop but once again it's better than a Mustang or it's better than a little coupe or it's definitely better than the back seat of a Miata, which is non-existent. So it gives you a little bit of practicality and it's great for kids. It's great for someone who wants an all-around car to maybe haul the kids to school in and find some time on the weekends or on their commute to have a little bit of fun. That's really where the Focus ST wins in my eyes. And that's kind of where any hot hatch wins, but because this is a discontinued car, um, the appreciation is just growing more and more and thus the values are at the very least holding and of course can find a very high mileage focus or a slightly abused focus ST for maybe closer to that ten, twelve thousand dollar price point, but a nicer condition, more highly specced, unmodified or lower mileage car is pretty close to that twenty thousand dollar range, regardless of whether it's an ST one, two, or three. Of course, ST threes are gonna be worth the most just because those were car seats, nicer headlights and a couple other nice cities they have. And they actually have a sunglass holder here that's absent, which is worth no money in my eyes. I hate sunglasses. Well, before we wrap the video up, we have to go into an obligatory tall boy test. I already mentioned that the Focus ST here doesn't have the best rear seat leg room, but it also doesn't have the most tall boy coverage, at least not as good as I was expecting here in, a, in an otherwise practical hot hatch. So let's jump into the tall boy test and find out.
kind of falls flat in its face. The steering is a lot less communicative and it understeers a lot more, which is already common of the entire VW Audi group, but very noticeable still in the GTI, despite being a more performance oriented car. I'm really having a very easy time pushing this car. It's like effortless. I, I'm really, really impressed. And I think for sub $20,000 in the current market, this is a steal and a car that I don't see ever depreciating much below the prices that they're currently at, aside from the factor of mileage. And again, if you buy one and put 100,000 miles on it, obviously it's gonna go down in value, but these are truly special cars. And I'm really impressed with the capabilities of it at the limit. Now, the looks are not my absolute favorite, and I already alluded to the refinement. You're not gonna get quite the the, v, the GTI, which is the car I've been constantly comparing this to, really does feel like a budget Audi. And this feels like a Ford. And I'm not saying that to offend anybody, but Ford is best at trucks. And when you hop an F-150, you have no complaints, you have no qualms. But here in a slightly sportier car, it's not quite up to par with some of the competition. But again, at the price point, I'm so willing to forgive some of those little cheap plastics and stuff. It's really not a big deal. And the looks are, yeah, I mean, they're, it's better than the Fiesta ST's looks, right? Even though I've heard that car is a fantastic driving experience, this has a little bit more of a substantial look and feel to it. Okay, our first wheel squeal of the entire drive, and it was pretty tight right-handed, and I wasn't that bad, wasn't off-putting in any way, it just was the first time I've even pushed the car hard enough. Look, I mean, I'm taking these turns at, there we go, a little more at 65 miles an hour on that turn. I mean, that's those are the kinds of turns you could take at that speed and the likes of an M2. It's really impressive uh, what this car can do. Now, there is also a pretty cool sport mode here where if you double press your traction off button, you go into the sport mode, it gives you a little bit of an exaggerated sport mode across your central little digital screen here. And now my traction is a little bit less, or will be a little bit less intrusive. Give it a little push here in one turn in sport mode and we'll see how it handles with a little less intrusive traction. It lets the car slip out just a little bit more here in that sport mode. It is more progressive and it is again more similar actually, I'll be honest, to an all wheel drive car kind of losing a bit of traction at the limit, which is nice. Personally, I'm fine with leaving the traction in its normal mode because it's not very invasive and the car is able to put the power down very nicely as I've been alluding to. All right, so on that note, if you guys enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. New videos are dropping every single week. Comment down below, let me know what you guys wanna see. I'll do my best to make it happen. And on this turning, accelerating note, I'm Rio, peace out.